Hello, I'm Shelley Duvall. Join us for tonight's tale about the adventures of a little radish who learns the many lessons of love. From doting parents, a charming prince, and a most eccentric witch. It's full of fun and magic, and it's scary enough to make your hair curl. Or even grow. Rapunzel. Once upon a time, in a town far away, there lived a candle maker and his wife. And though they were poor, they were very happy. Soon, they were going to have a child. Their first child, after many years of marriage. Claude, it's beginning to kick. Here, feel. No, not there. There. Hard, too. It must be a boy. Great. But what's wrong with the girl? Oh, nothing. Well, if we had a son, I could walk with him in the woods, hunt with him, teach him my trade. And couldn't you teach a daughter your trade as well? A candle's so very hard to make. Marie, I swear, if it's a girl, I'll be just as happy. Really? Of course. And if it is, I'll teach our daughter to make candles, too. Good. Stew. No, I'm not hungry for stew. I want something special. Like what? A pickle? <laughs> no, not a pickle either. Uh, I thought pregnant women liked pickles. I don't want a pickle. <clears throat> there are times when I crave a pickle, that's true. But now I want... What do I want? I want a rapun. That's it. A rapun. You want a what? A rapun. A radish. A very special radish with blue leaves. <sighs> Marie, we have no radishes, let alone ones with blue leaves. Oh, God, I've got to have a radish. I'd give anything for a taste of one right now. Sure, you wouldn't like a nice cucumber? Mm -hmm. Get away from me. I won't have anything to do with you until you get me that radish. Where am I going to get one of your special radishes at this time of night? Hmm? There. Out there. In our neighbor's garden. 
right next to the strawberries. She gives me the creeps. Well, that may be, but she does have those radishes. Marie, I am not going to that woman's house tonight. I think she's a witch. Don't be ridiculous. She may be strange, but she's only a woman. <laughs> Besides, you don't even have to see her. Well, you mean just sneak into her garden and take them? Why not? Get a bunch. She won't miss them. And if she does? Hmm? Well, make her some of your special candles, then. I don't know. Claude, I'm gonna die if I don't get a radish soon. Please, do it for me. And so, Claude the Candlemaker left his house in the middle of the night to get a radish for his wife. Nervously, he looked around, then quietly, oh, very quietly, he climbed over the high stone wall. Claude felt shivers of fright scurry up and down his back, like tiny mice with icy cold feet. He wanted to turn and run, but he had promised his wife a radish. At last, surrounded by exotic vegetables and strange herbs, right next to a mandrake bush, he found the witch's special radishes. garden. Frightened out of his wits, Claude fled from the witch's garden. Scary. She's scary. Think she recognized you? Oh, I don't know. I didn't stay around long enough to find out. I can tell you one thing, though. You couldn't pay me enough to go back there again, day or night. Well, I'm glad you did it just this once. You've made me a happy woman. Some raw, some roasted, some in salads, some in porridge, some in pies. Even a few in a chocolate fondue. hoped that his wife had finally gotten over her terrible craving for radishes. Marie 
savored each and every one of them. But in the end, they were all gone. Even so, she seemed to be contented now. What's the matter? I'm hungry. Oh, no. Not again. What is it this time? Radishes. Forget it, Mary. No, I won't go. Oh, Claude, please. I said no. Didn't you hear me? Just this one last time. I promise I won't ask you ever again. I told you I'm not going to that woman's garden. You don't realize how dangerous it is. She is a witch. And maybe you don't realize how desperate I am. I can't help it. I feel so strange. Marie. Claude, I have to have a radish. You are not going to die if you don't get a radish. How do you know? Well, have you ever heard of anyone dying for a lack of a radish? Well, that proves it. It proves what? It proves you don't love me, that's all. It proves nothing of the sort. It merely proves that I'm not fool enough to venture into that woman's garden again. Not man enough, maybe. <sighs> I know. You're afraid of her, aren't you? Afraid of a woman. Yes, that's right. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of a woman. <laughs> My mother was right about you, after all. <laughs> afraid, huh? You and your mother. Ha. I'll get you radishes. I'll get you enough radishes to choke on. I knew you wouldn't disappoint me. So, Claude once more ventured into the night to get a radish for his wife. Though the snow owl hooted, Claude did not heed its warning. He continued to dig in the witch's garden. Uproot my radishes. Oh. Yeah, I'm sure if the wind was strong enough to blow me in, it was surely strong enough to uproot a few radishes. <laughs> <laughs> and how did they make their way into your sack? Oh. I was just wondering that myself. Uh... Liar! See, thief and liar! Do you know what I'm going to do to you for that? Oh, what? I'm going to, to cut off your fingers and I'm going to plant them in the ground to take the place of my missing radishes. Oh, no, please. Yes. I did it for my wife. Good. I'll cut off her fingers, too. Please have mercy. We're going to have a child. A child? Did you say you're going to have a child? 
Yes, you see, my wife had this terrible craving for radishes, and she woke me. She wanted... She wanted a radish. Well, why didn't you ask me for one, huh? Instead of stealing into my garden? Oh, I didn't... I didn't uh, want to disturb you. Oh. So, because your wife has these strange nocturnal desires, you became a thief? For love. For love? I did it for love. Love is no excuse, you mewling, puling lump of a man. Now, what am I going to do with you, huh? Oh, let me go. Please, if you let me go, I, I promise I'll never steal a radish or anything else ever again. Too late. You have to pay for your crime. Pay? Well, I, I tell you what. I will make you candles for the rest of my life for free. Candles? Candles are not enough. You took something from me without asking. Now I'm going to take something from you. What? What could you want from me? Something you value. Well, anything. I... Anything? You swear? I swear. But I'm a poor man. I have little of value. Everyone has something. Well, I have some lovely... Brass candlesticks. My grandfather's grandfather clock. I know what I want. What? I want your child. Child? Oh, no. I want to be godmother to your child. Oh, godmother. Of course, I'll have to ask my wife. Or my I wife never or... could have a child. And I've always wanted one. Well, like, like I said, I, I'm not sure my wife will agree at first, but... Uh... I could give her things that you could never give her. Marie? Marie? No, you don't. Not Marie. I'm talking about your daughter. Your wife is going to have a baby girl. How do you know? I have special powers, you idiot! Do you want me to demonstrate some of them on your miserable hide? Oh, no. D a daughter. That's nice. I'll have to tell Marie. You're too stupid to raise a baby girl. Oh, a son, perhaps. A daughter, never. No. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll take her. I'll raise her myself. Yes, I'll raise her as a princess. Don't worry, she'll be very happy. No, but I won't and Marie won't and you have no idea what this baby means Get to us. Get away from me, you freakness tub of oh. guts. Get out of my garden. Go. Get out. Be gone. And take your radishes with you. Oh. Oh. They've already cost you. <laughs> oh, good! You got the radishes! Oh, better yet, a whole bushel of radishes! Oh. Worse yet. <sighs> Worse? This time, she caught me in her garden. Oh, dear. Well, did you explain to her that you were just getting them for me? Yes. That it was an emergency? Yes. And? And now she wants to take our baby. What? Take our baby? I told you, she is a witch, Lee. Oh, don't be stupid. Are you calling me stupid? I am not stupid. Her, now you. Did she? Yes. She 
said I was too stupid to raise a daughter. A son, perhaps, but not a daughter. <laughs> you mean? Yes, we're going to have a baby girl. Oh, Claude. Oh. Then she really is a... Witch. Oh, no. I think I lost my appetite. After that, Marie developed a severe allergic reaction to radishes and never ate another radish the rest of her life. But she and Claude hoped against hope that somehow, someway, they could keep their baby girl from the witch's clutches. Claude placed garlic, wolfbane, and wooden crosses all around the house. Then he taught his wife how to shoot a musket. Good! Right where the heart would be. If she had a heart. Finally, on the first day of spring, Marie gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. Both she and Claude were very happy and very tired. I didn't get much sleep oh, myself. Dear. Come to Papa. Oh. Oh, the poor baby. Oh. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Papa's gonna buy you a mockingbird. And if that mockingbird don't sing, Daddy's gonna buy you a diamond ring. Oh. Think she's forgotten? It's been three months. I sure hope so. Oh, this baby sure cries a lot, but I do love her. Who's there? Who is it? which took the baby and disappeared into a distant country. There she named her Rapunzel for the radish and hid her away in a tall tower in the middle of an enchanted forest. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Mama's gonna buy you a mockingbird. If that mockingbird don't sing, Mama's gonna buy you a diamond. Rapunzel grew up thinking that the witch was her mother, and her mother a witch. For pity's sake, Mother, that's enough. Sit still, sweetheart. But I want to go ride Pegasus. Just a little longer. I'm not quite through yet. 86, 87, 88, As she was growing up, the witch never cut Rapunzel's beautiful golden hair. It grew longer and longer and longer. Eight, ninety-nine, one hundred. But when Rapunzel blossomed into womanhood, the witch began to fear that someday a man would come and take her away. So she locked Rapunzel in a room at the top of the tower and sealed the entrance. Mother, what are you doing? Oh, it's for your own good, sweetheart. Believe me, it's for your own good. Why can't I ever decide what's good for me? It isn't fair. Who told you life was fair? Let me out. You'll be safe up in the tower, Rapunzel. No man will be able to touch you up there. But I don't want to be safe. I want to be free. Oh, Rapunzel, you're so young and innocent. You, you just don't understand the world, darling. How am I ever going to learn about the world if I'm shut up in this tower? I will teach you. I will teach you everything you have to know. After all, I have been around. A long time. Hundreds of years before you were even born. And I learned one thing in those years, Rapunzel. You can't trust men. 
They'll lie to you. They'll deceive you. They'll steal what's most precious from you. But I don't even know any man. Exactly, and that's just the way we're going to keep it. Are you finished? Finished! Mother! Come back! Please! I promise I won't even think about men! They scare me anyway. Let down your hair. Why? So I can climb up and see you. What for? So that I can bring you something to eat and drink. I don't want anything from you. All right. I'll come back tomorrow. Perhaps you'll change your mind. Never. Rapunzel, let down your hair. After many days of resistance, Rapunzel became so weak and hungry that she finally gave in to the witch and let down her hair. Take it easy. There. You see how much better it is when you do as I say? You're a lucky girl to have a mother that loves you as much as I do. If you really loved me, you wouldn't keep me locked up in this tower. Oh, Rapunzel, ever since you were born, I've brought you up like a princess. I've given you everything. Except a father. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're not. No, I'm not. You're right. You're absolutely right, miss. I am not. It's you. You are nothing but an ungrateful little, little... You're a little witch. When I think of, of, of all the years that I've stayed here by myself raising you, and this is the thanks that I get? I'm being kept a prisoner, and you want thanks? A prisoner? Oh, so you silly child. This is not a prison. This... This is a castle, a beautiful castle in the middle of an enchanted forest. There are millions of girls who'd give their right eye teeth to live in a place like this, Rapunzel. Why, you're surrounded by luxury. And look at that view. Darling, where are you ever going to find a view again like that? Oh, I don't care about the view. I'm bored with it. Sure, it's pretty, but after a while it all seems the same. It's boring, and I'm bored being here all by myself, cooped up with no one to talk to, no one to share with. Sweetheart, don't you worry. Don't you worry. Mother is going to come see you every day. Every day. But I want a friend. Your old mother is not good enough for you anymore? It's not that. It's just that I want someone new and exciting to come into my life. And take you away from me? Never. We could live here then. No, it's out of the question. But, Mother. No, no, no. All right. You want a companion? I'll get you a companion. You will? Yes. I promised you one, and I'll get you one. Carol? Okay. A beautiful macaw. What did you want? I don't know. A man, I guess. A man? Oh, Rapunzel. Birds are much less trouble than men, believe me. No, he'll make you a perfect companion. Won't you, Piero? <coughs> Hold out your arm, darling. Okay, go. His claws are sharp. You'll get used to them. 
He'll keep you company, and he'll watch over you. My little radish. Years passed, and Rapunzel remained locked up in her tower room. She grew sadder and sadder, thinking of the life she was missing in the world outside. I never will marry. I'll be no man's bride. I expect to live single all the days of my life. Oh, there's many a change in the winter wind and a change in the clouds' design. Oh, there's many a change in a young man's heart, but never a change in mine. And her sweet, sad voice carried through the enchanted forest for seven leagues in every direction, but no one other than her macaw or the witch was ever there to hear her songs. One day, however, a handsome young prince went hunting in the enchanted forest and lost his way. He wandered aimlessly for hours trying to find his way back home. Then, in the distance, he heard a strange and beautiful voice singing. Lured by the feeling of sweet sadness in her voice, the prince was drawn toward Rapunzel. But just as he was approaching her prison tower, he caught sight of the witch. Henry. Are you a man? A real live man? Yes. I've never met a man before. Really? You haven't? Really? Well, I'm pleased to be the first. What exactly is a man? <sighs> Let down your hair. I'll climb up and you can find out. No. No, why? My mother said never to trust men. Well, some you shouldn't, but I'm not an ordinary man. Well, still, you are a man. Well, yes, I certainly hope so. How do I know I can trust you? Well, I give you my word. My mother says men lie. Your mother doesn't know all men. I promise I won't lie to you. Promise you won't deceive me either? Or steal what's most precious from me? I promise. Cross your heart and hope to die if you lie? <laughs> yes, I cross my heart and I hope to die if I lie. All right. But only for a little while. I don't want my mother to catch you here. Beautiful. 
Thank you. feel anything? I mean, when I came in, didn't you feel? Oh, yes. My goodness, yes. Sort of warm and tingly all over and yes. kind of scary, too. Scary? Oh, a good kind of scary. I've never felt like this before. If that's what love is, then... I guess I love you too. That was nice. Indeed it was. Does it get better? Mm. Show me. Rapunzel? around here man there's a man around what does he look like I don't know yet I ran across some tracks in the forest I thought he might have come this way no I mean I don't know I've been napping oh. well when I find him I'm going to gouge his eyes out I'm going to make his brains into soup Ugh, mother now, Rapunzel, don't be hasty to judge it until you've tried it. Actually, it's delicious. Well, you go back to sleep, sweetheart. I'm going hunting. For soup. Ah. You can come out now. We should go on. I think I love you. Hush. My mother must never know that you were here. Oh, but if I talk to her, if I tell her how much I love you... Oh, no. She'd kill you. She would? Or worse. What could be worse? I don't care. I want to be with you. I want to marry you. You do? Yes. Really? Will you marry me? You're the man I've always dreamed of. Better even. You, woman, I've carried in my heart all my life. As if I've known you always. Marry me. Yes. Yes, I will marry you. Rapunzel and the prince then gave their vows to each other and from that time on considered themselves husband and wife. Let's leave this wretched town before your mother returns. But how? Well, climb down your... That's right. There's no way in or out except by my hair. Then we'll cut your hair. Oh, no. You don't understand. I've never had my hair cut. It's the only thing I've got. Rapunzel, you have the longest, most beautiful hair I've ever seen, but it's not all you have. Beautiful voice and a pure and innocent heart. In time, your hair will grow long again. But Mother told me that cutting my hair would bring me bad luck. You listen to everything your mother tells you. She warned that the day scissors were put to my locks would be the worst day of my life. Very well. If you prize your hair so much, we won't cut it. I'll chop down a tree and build a ladder. Oh, no, she'd hear you. Well, then what are we to do? I know. Bring me some skeins of silk and I'll weave them into a ladder. It will take time, Rapunzel. Your mother will discover us. My mother comes to visit me during the day. You'll come at night, my prince. And after that, the prince did come at night bringing with him skeins of silk that Rapunzel braided into a rope for a ladder. 
Soon, the ladder would be finished and Rapunzel would be able to escape from the tower with her prince. <laughs> she was very happy. Compared to what? Nothing. Compared to nothing. Compared to nothing? You're lighter than air. That's all. There's something going on here. There's something I don't like. Rapunzel, by any chance, have you seen that man? Man? What man? He's out there somewhere. I keep running across his tracks in the forest. But don't worry, I'll find him. And when I do, I'm going to... Come at night, my prince! What did you say? Come at night, my prince! All right. All right. Where is he? Where are you hiding him? But, Mother, there's no one here. Don't lie to me. You know you can't lie to me. But I'm Where not lying. What's this? I think I love you. Rapunzel, will you marry me? to fix you. Oh. I'm going to cut off all of that precious hair. Oh, Mother, no. Stop oh, blubbering. Get down don't there. My hair. You brought this all on yourself, no. you wicked child. Mother, please, don't cut my Stop hair. Stop blubbering, you please. girl. You brought Mother. this all on yourself. Mother! Now I'm going to take you away from this place. You'll never see your prince again. The witch spirited Rapunzel to a desert place far away. And left her there to fend for herself. So pretty and so fair, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your golden hair. I've got you at last. What have you done with her? Nothing compared to what I'm going to do to you. After he was blinded and his love taken away, the prince was lost in misery.
For months he ate roots and berries, but tasted only bitterness. Then, after a time, he gathered himself up and went searching for Rapunzel. In the desert, Rapunzel gave birth to twins, a boy and a girl. They were children born of love. Still, Rapunzel was sad. They would never know their father, as she had never known hers. Kids broke. Mama's gonna buy you a nanny coat. Then, one day, Rapunzel's heart leapt for joy. My prince? Rapunzel? Is that you? Yes. What's happened to you? I'm blind. Doesn't matter. I found you. That's all that matters. <sighs> Let me hold you. Lie your head down in my lap. I've searched for you through forests and cities and deserts. My eyes are blind. Your image has been burned into my heart. I heard your voice calling to me. And now, I'm with you again. Now, don't cry, Rapunzel. I can't help it. As Rapunzel cried, a magic tear ran down her face. Onto the prince's eye. And miraculously restored his sight. Hanzo. I can see you again. I don't believe it, but it's true. I can see. Oh, my prince. Our children. Rapunzel proudly showed the prince his heirs. In the midst of the desert, they discovered a joyous oasis of love. A son? <laughs> <laughs> And a daughter. <gasps> After this, the prince took Rapunzel and the twins back to his kingdom. There, they were reunited with their parents and they all lived happily ever after. Yet more or less except for the witch who died of hardening of the heart.